As we begin to focus on crisis communication, there are a number of factors that will influence the way an organization can and should respond to a crisis. One of the principal factors influencing crisis response is the type of crisis an organization is experiencing. There are hosts of examples of crises. However, in this lecture, we're going to focus on transgressions. The assumption that we make is re and is reflected in most crisis research is that different types of crises warrant different crisis responses. Of course, you'll find that different authors will talk about different topologies for crises. For me, this one focuses on the question of material blame potential and complements our stakeholder-centered view. So, these four categories emerge as a good way to help us understand and categorize crises. So, what is a transgression? Not surprisingly, the organization or person who has done something wrong. In the case of transgressions, clearly the organization's at fault. This doesn't mean that there is necessary any malintent, but material blame can be laid at the feet of the organization. The easy example is Tiger Woods' fall from grace. Certainly it started as a non-golfing related problem, but over the last several years has certainly entered his golf game. But transgressions come in many shapes and sizes. So let's take a look at the different types of transgressions. You'll also see the principal author references for these different types of crises if you want to read more about them. We'll start with the easy kind of easiest kind of transgression to consider, illegal behavior, where the organization or public figure has not only done something wrong, but something illegal and they've been caught for it. In some cases, these kinds of behaviors may not really amount to much more than a fine. However, in others, corporate illegal behavior not only brings down an organization, but can also fundamentally change laws. For example, in 2001, the U.S. Security and Exchanges Commission brought charges against Enron, an energy and commodities company, and it was one of the most shocking and widely reported legal and ethical violations of all time. It not only bankrupted Enron, but it destroyed Arthur Anderson, one of the largest audit firms in the world. It created a reputation risk for organizations like baseball team Houston Astros, whose field was named Enron Field because of the corporate relationship between the baseball team and its sponsor, Enron. But more than that, it resulted in fundamental changes to accounting law that was put into place in the U.S. and had ripple effects globally as any country doing business with the U.S. or a U.S. multinational had to comply. So illegal behavior can result in both serious material and reputational problems for organizations, even entire industries. A second type of transgression is some kind of technical breakdown or accident. In this case, the organization didn't necessarily purposefully do anything wrong, but ultimately it's their responsibility because of a technology or equipment failure. These can be some of the most deadly and life-changing types of transgressions. A clear example is the MH370 flight disappearance in 2015, and that we still really don't have any meaningful answers to what happened. However, the list of major accidents includes those like the Chernobyl disaster in the Ukraine in the 1980s, the 1984 Bhopal explosion where a pesticide plant run by Union Carbide exploded in India killing around 4,000 people, or more recently the Rana Plaza collapse in Bangladesh killing about 1,100 workers and injuring another 2,500. Another type of technical breakdown is the recall. In the case of a recall, some defect is found in a product or brand, and it's suggested that it be returned. These happen all, all the time. In 2015 alone, there were 51.26 million cars recalled globally. Yet, a simple recall doesn't necessarily prompt a major crisis for organizations. This is the difference between a problem and a crisis. But certainly one of the most problematic recalls uh, in recent m mind is the reputation standpoint, from a reputation standpoint, was the Volkswagen emissions crisis, where it was discovered that the company had misrepresented its emissions trials and something like 86,000 cars were recalled globally. In part, this emerged as such a massive crisis because of the naughtiness. It wasn't just some manufacturing mistake, but there was deception involved. 
more than that because the brand had been synonymous with quality and integrity for so long it fundamentally violated people's expectations but we'll come on to both organizational and stakeholder factors in other lectures just a wee bit of tease of things to come the third type of transgression is what's called mega damage and this is a technological breakdown like we discussed earlier but one with such massive damage or loss of life that its effects are likely to be felt for the years to come an example of this is the exxon valdez where the ship's captain fell asleep and rang the tanker aground in an important part of the alaskan coastline in terms of both biodiversity and economy twenty-five years on and the region is still feeling the effects of this accident while many of the species in the area have recovered there are species that just haven't and they seem unlikely to recover as a result of the damage another type of transgression are accidents or recalls that are the direct result of human error certainly while the exxon valdez fits into this category it fits better into the mega damage category but another example of this kind of crisis was the twenty thirteen spanish train derailment caused by a driver going too fast around a corner and ignoring safety regulations for that particular stretch of track of the two hundred twenty two people aboard seventy nine died a hundred and forty were injured so the devastating proportion of loss in life made it stand out death and destruction by organizations or their employees that could have and should have been presented are obvious transgressions but so too are misdeeds where there may not have been any physical injuries but there is certainly damage to stakeholder such is the case with bertie madoff whose ponzi schemes are affected around forty eight hundred people in losses of excess of sixty million dollars in these types of crisis the focus of the crisis really is on the stakeholders and what organizations and groups around them can do to support sometimes it'll be down to the organization to help but oftentimes it's about the complexity of third parties managing the crisis and so these can be incredibly difficult to coordinate and deal with at all levels now there are accident, accidents where people fail or equipment fails and those are transgressions but there are also accidents where decisions that have been made knowingly place some stakeholders at risk we talked about the grenfell case during the issues management decision making discussion but it represents one of the clearest examples of this kind of transgression where somewhere along the line an organization or multiple organizations potentially made decisions about the cladding that put the residents at risk this is one of those types of crises that will likely result in years of problems because of the number of buildings in the uk with the same kind of cladding essentially this will go from a single misdeed to become an industry-wide crisis affecting many different organizations and certainly thousands of stakeholders so at this point you should have a pretty clear sense of what counts as a transgression along with a group of case examples to demonstrate the point like i said in the case of transgressions it's clear and direct about the line of blame that can be applied to an organization or public figure regardless of whether there was physical damage or not that was incurred but the question is really how do transgressions affect the types of responses appropriate to them if we bring it back to the stakeholder relationship model that we've already discussed part of predicting what message should be used is understanding how stakeholders are likely to react to the situation research is demonstrating that there is a very strong link between stakeholders evaluations of a situation and the type of crisis response that is most appropriate across state several studies stakeholder attitudes about the crisis itself how much they care about it how much they feel like it'll affect them and the like tell us what kinds of messages they expect to hear and need to hear to allay their concerns and their interests in practical terms if practitioners understand these factors it'll point them to specific types of crisis response strategies that well executed will help to manage the core threats to the stakeholders and thus the situation and organization let me give you a practical illustration from different studies we already know from our discussion with agenda setting that media no matter what platform or social media we're talking about focuses on negative events and that 
focus most affects those people who are already uncertain. It increases concern and a perception of personal involvement with the topics. So in the case of crises, agenda setting tells us that the more coverage in the traditional media and social media a crisis gets, the more people are likely to feel emotionally connected to the crisis. So if stakeholders feel emotionally involved in a crisis, what will happen? Well, the research on this that's emerged in the last several years is pretty clear. When stakeholders are negatively triggered by crises, their reactions to organizations are going to be more negative. But it offers some pretty clear clues as to what crisis responses should begin to look like with the most negative of crises transgressions. First, we know that most crises produce anxiety, but certainly transgressions are most likely to produce the highest levels of anxiety, especially when the organizations violate our expectations. So all crisis response needs to try and reassure people in order to minimize anxiety. But beyond that, research shows that the more people feel the crisis is relevant to them, the more likely they are to look for someone or some organization to blame. Now, in the case of the transgression, we already know who's to blame. So any crisis response is going to have to try and min manage that, either by minimizing the blame or owning the blame and focusing on recovery. One of the principal reasons that blame and attitudes about the organization have to be managed is because, as a species, we seem to get a bit of a bizarre and perverse pleasure out of bad things happening to those who have done wrong. So the schadenfreude for organizations with poor reputations tends to lead to negative conversations and online comments about them. And a final note about this, when a situation is perceived as controllable or predictable, which is typically the case with transgressions, it leads to greater levels of stakeholder anger. What this means in terms of crisis response is that it needs to target those emotional needs and try to respond, manage, and can address concerns directly. If it doesn't, then the crisis response is not likely to meet the expectations and the communication needs of its stakeholders. There is certainly a lot of research about transgressions, but these pieces are good starters to take a look at.